So Alan, my final question for you is in terms of networking, we all hear that networking is key. It should be part of the job search. It's essential. It's a two-way communication. Job seekers need to do that before applying for a job and not just when they're applying, when they're looking for a job, they might be desperate. So what's your take in terms of networking, how they should do it? Is there a right way, wrong way? Let's explore that part. First off, networking is how you get jobs. 40% of jobs come through the referral channel. I actually think that number is higher now, but that's the latest data I have. Heard. It's 70. Yeah. In my case, 24 out of my 29 jobs came because someone put in a kind word on my behalf. Okay. So if, especially if you want to get a job at a competitive company, you need to earn a referral and all referrals are not created equally. So you need to build these relationships. You need to understand how to get into that company. You need to have someone on the inside who yeah. at the very least is referring you optimally advocating for you to have a recruiter or a hiring manager to look actually a hiring manager to look at your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. or your resume. So let's get more details. Let's say I want to work at say, Amazon. All right. And I am trying to find there. So I found someone, a recruiter or someone in a job title that I want to work. Right. And I send them a connection request. I check their profile, their activities, find something interesting and reach out to them you know, I really appreciate your post or this is a very interesting information. We can, can we elaborate? Do you, do you have five minutes to chat, coffee chat or whatever? Do you think it, this is a good approach or everyone is doing this and no one is getting any results? You, you need to dig the well before you're thirsty. So you need to build those relationships before the role is open. So before you're even ready to apply to Amazon, you need to be building relationships. So in your case, um, if you went to British Columbia Institute of Technology, mm. you want to find other people from BCIT mm. that work at Amazon. And then you want to start sorry. building relationship because of that commonality or the commonality of that you worked at Conagra Brands and mm. now they're there. So you want to build those relationships before you need them. Yeah. If you wait until the job is posted and then you reach out to someone in a transactional way, transactional. say, hey, I see you work at Amazon. I see this role that I want to work there. There are people that will submit you in because Amazon, they give a $1,000 referral bonus. At Google, I got $4,000. But they're just putting you in as yeah. a courtesy referral. And that's going to carry, that carries more weight than a cold application. Mm -hmm. But there's probably 50 people that got, like, got referred in for that role. But if you, let's say... I'm going D because I feel that this is very important. Let's say you're a new immigrant or you're a newcomer or you got laid off and you haven't built those relationships. And it's now kind of too late. You know, again, as we said, building relationship takes time. It's like going to a bank. You cannot withdraw from day one. You need to put some deposits. It will take maybe three, four months till a job mm -hmm. comes up. Then how, you know, again, the, in the mindset of a recruiter, uh, Job seeker, I need a job now. I need to pay the bills now. This networking thing is taking a lot of time. I cannot go chat or coffee or whatever. But how can we shift the mindset of this is important while you're still doing the job search? So we teach our clients 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. So first you identify 40 target companies. Okay. Then you reach out to 30 people at those companies. So you build those relationships before you're even ready. The 20 so stars. When you're sending messages, is there any specific you're sending? Like Yes. Okay. So, hi, I see you went to BCIT. Mm. I went to BCIT too. I'd love to connect with former alum. Or um, some, some commonality okay. is great. Or if you go to an event, you saw yes. somebody at the customer, like at HubSpot Inbound, and you're like, hey, I saw you were at HubSpot Inbound. I was there too. I'd love to connect with you. Okay. So something on the commonality side. Like people a friendly like, way, not stress, yeah. a friendly way. Okay. Exactly. And you send out a lot of those <laughs> because not everybody is going to reply to you. For and sure. that's actually a good thing that not everybody replies to you because the people that don't reply to you are likely not going to be all that helpful anyway. So they're all actually right. saving you some time. All right. Okay. And then what's next? What's next is then you ask them nicely, say, hey, I see that you work at Amazon. It's a company that I'm excited about. I'd love to learn how you got in there. Would you be open to sharing some advice sometime in the coming weeks? Okay. And let them respond. Yeah. And maybe like 20, 30% will say, sure, I'll talk to you. 
And some people will say no. And some people will say, oh, just email me your question or just tell me mm -hmm. what job you want me to refer you to. Okay. Those people are just blowing you off. But the yeah. people that are willing to have that conversation with you mm -hmm. are more likely to be the ones that are not just going to refer you in, but ultimately advocate for you. Yes. And But don't expect that. You still have to earn that through having an effective the conversation yes. where you talk less than you listen and you are seeking advice and you are in a conversation that is intended to be mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. Not only can they help you, there might be some ways that you can help them as well. Yeah. And one final thing, what's your take in terms of reaching to recruiters or hiring manager? Let's say, hi, Alan, I saw that you are hiring. Uh, I feel that I'm a good candidate. This is my resume or this is what I can bring to the table or I have accomplished this in previous roles. I can do the same to you. What do you think about that? It, if they publish something on LinkedIn saying I'm hiring, then they're giving you like the open access to reach out to them. And then you reach out to them in a humble and respectful way. Don't send them a resume if they don't ask for it. They'll be able to see your LinkedIn profile. Yes. If someone is not publish, publicly saying that they're looking for that role, mm -hmm. I, I would not reach out to them. What I would instead do is build the advocacy at the company and have someone on the inside find out who the hiring manager is, because you can always look that up, especially at large companies. You can find yes. out who the hiring manager is internally and have them reach out to the hiring manager on your behalf. Mm. Yeah, those are great tips. And one last thing, especially so for immigrants and new students, they are new to the country. Maybe their experience where they are, it's not that much relevant or, you know, maybe they might have an English barrier or cultural differences, how they can gap that bridge. Um, play to your strengths. So if you are from a foreign country, from like an international country, there might be opportunities to work on that area of business. So I've known people from Portugal that have been good at serving the LATAM market because Brazil is the largest part of the LATAM yes. market and they were very effective there. Secondarily, while you may want to get a job in the States and you can make that your plan A, you have to be realistic that some roles will not sponsor you for those roles. So there's going to be even harder for you as an immigrant to get these roles. So you also need to have a plan B. Yeah. So you look plan A to get in the States. You look plan B for countries where you are authorized to work at and ideally at a multinational. So if you're coming from India, if you got a job at Google India, yeah, it's only going to pay 25% or maybe 20% of what Google in the States pays, but you will get paid well for India. And if you kick ass in that job, I've seen this happen time and time again, Google will relocate you. Yeah. I've seen people go from India to Singapore, from Singapore to the States, from Dublin to Seattle, from Moscow to Sydney, mm. from uh, Italy to the States. So the stuff happens all the time, but yeah. um, it's hard. It's hard to get in. And uh, I'm not a big fan of some of our immigration rules, but yeah. it's the game that we have to play by. Yeah. I totally agree with you. When I came 10 year, 12 years ago from Lebanon to Canada, I was struggling and I had to have a survival job, but I was still having a plan B. I was still networking, going to events. I went back to school and keep everything. But it was a hard part. Again, it all depends on where you are, your credentials and everything. It's not just, it doesn't want, it's not one solution fits all. Every, yeah. Everyone is unique. And Canada is easier. Canada is not easy. Canada is easier than the States. And, and yeah, so so it, it's tough. Um, it, it's tough. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate that. And again, with that, my interview comes to an end. I really appreciate the conversation. Very practical, easy to do. And for the audience, uh, if you haven't watched all the previous videos, you can watch them, like, comment. If you have more questions, you can reach to us. And again, tune in for other great guests I'm preparing for you guys. And again, Ellen, thank you very much. And let's keep in touch. Bye, everyone. Thanks,